G'day guys, my name is Christopher, welcome back to my channel. The August Art Snacks is here, so let's cue that intro and get unboxing. Alright, here we go. It's always so exciting and I'm trying out another new camera angle today. Hopefully it's a nice one or a winner. And that's why I keep looking over there instead of up like normal. And what do we got? Wow, okay. Bags of paint from Sennelier. I have never tried any Sennelier paints, so I am super excited by that. We also have the parcel, a menu, which I throw aside as always, and a lollipop. Is it a dum-dum? Yay, an American lolly that I actually recognize because I received one of these last year sometime for Art Snacks. So let's check all this out. Oh, okay, I gotta keep on unwrapping first, sorry. Oh, wow. Yay, cute sticker, super cute pastel colors. Let's see. And just need to unfold it a little bit and an amazing brush a king art half inch oval wash premium i don't think i've owned an oval wash and if i do it's much smaller than that But that's a really great size for these bags of paint, or I think it is anyway, which is the Sennelier Abstract Matte. I've got my green curse for the first time in ages. It's permanent green light. That's very much my green curse color. And I've received primary blue. So those are two lovely colors to play with. And I've got a pen that I've never seen before, a Winsor & Newton 0.5 pigment ink. This pen feels really lovely, definitely high quality. Yeah, it's water resistant, non-fading pigment ink. So a fun little box with some cool products in here. Let's get swatching. Let's go on an art adventure. Okay, so first up, anytime you get a new brush, you should be putting it into water to wash off any of the, the glue that's holding the bristles in shape. This is a foldable cup from Faber-Castell and you can push down, which I won't at the moment because it's got water in it, but it'll flatten the cup so you can travel with it. And it also has these bumpy ridges so that you can place the brush on it as you're painting and doing things. And now that it's wet you can see those bristles are going to move really easily now really interesting brush it's going to be hard to paint with with only using that brush so i might need to cheat but i'll see how i go got my handy dandy grumbucker watercolor paper sampler to try the paints on Got a little bit of card left over. So I'm not sure how these work. I might get a palette for it. Yes, I will. And there's 60 mil or two ounces. And do they have instructions? Not really, so I'll just shake it up. I don't know why, just because I think like you meant to shake things and try opening this. Okay, as it opens, a plastic ring seal breaks off, sort of. <laughs> okay, I should be able to remove that. And then I should be able to pour the paint. Yep, it pours out very easily. That's more than enough to start off with for me because I have no idea what I'm using it for yet. And acrylic paints, of course, dry out. But you can, of course, um, start to wet them a little bit or spray them with a little bit of water to keep them wet and from drying out for a little while. Or you can use a stay wet palette or all sorts of other techniques to deal with 
the fact that acrylics tend to dry. Here's the blue. Very likely I'll need to pour out some more. These are just really cute little bags and something really fun. I've seen some other brands have bagged paints but I've not tried any of them before and I didn't know Sennelier made them. And from what I know, a Sennelier is high quality stuff. And same for Winsor & Newton. So let's get into that. This pen feels really lovely and writes really smoothly and has a really great nib. I'm quite impressed with the feel of it. Okay, and now onto the acrylic paint, starting with the permanent green light. My brush was still damp. Probably should have dried that off. I just wanted to see what it would be like. So let's try a similarly light version for the blue, or a damp version for the blue. And then I'll do a dry. Wow, that's a lovely blue. It's a pretty nice green too. It's good. It's very much a green curse green. I haven't had it for a while, but it's back with a vengeance. And then let's try a thicker amount. I'm definitely not used to a brush like this either. And I'm not used to really using acrylic, so they're slipping around quite a bit. I have no idea what I'm going to to paint with it. Maybe I'll try a kind of loose portrait. Can I do that with just green and blue? I don't know. I've been doing so many portraits lately. And I also really loved doing the animal challenge with Sendrine last month. I'll put a card up if you didn't catch the July um, episode or video or whatever you call it. <laughs> the July art snacks, that's what it's called. It's like I've got my own TV show, I wish. <laughs> and then I will... I should have left some room to mix both the green and blue together and see what happens. Looks like it's going to make a lovely aqua or turquoise. Oh wow, that is a lovely colour. And now I need to just place it on top of here to see what happens. I think the line moved a little bit. Yeah, more than a little bit. I don't know how long it needs to set, but it needed longer than that apparently. It's not quite as permanent as I expected. Okay, so there is my unboxing. I Hopefully it was interesting from this perspective and angle on the camera. And now I need to think about doing a sketch and I'll see you guys for that. Art Adventure Part 2, coming soon. So after some thought, I decided not to do a portrait, but instead to do a landscape. About a year ago, my sister wanted me to paint a picture of our hometown, which is called Merwillumba in Australia. It means the place of many possums in Aboriginal or Indigenous Australian languages. And I never got around to painting it. Sorry, Shell. She often comments in my videos, so I feel really extra bad. But I decided to finally tackle it as at least as a quick study. And hopefully I'll make a bigger and better version of it at some point. But uh, I start by doing some pencil lines on an Art Alternatives canvas and I had that from I think a palette for packs still lying around from last year and of course acrylic paints will work well on some sort of canvas board if you have one. So and probably also fine for something like watercolor paper as well but I think it's nice to paint with acrylics onto a canvas if you've got one. And so you can really tell that I'm used to watercolors and not at all to acrylics because I leave all these white areas like I keep preserving the whites and I mean to do that for the clouds and the sky but you know it doesn't really make sense for the land areas and so I kind of spend a lot more time on the first layer than I should and I also add a little bit too much water in some parts. I go back in after I dry it off a little bit and then start to build up the layers as time goes on. I also find that I can make some interesting mixes with the blue and the green. I can't get a lot of range, you know, they're, they're only just two colours and I think one of them's a primary colour, but I'm still pretty happy with what I 
come up with and of course you can compare to the reference photo which I've placed up for you to have a look at and you can see that there's lots of bright greens and sort of bluish darkish sort of shading so it's a really great landscape choice to go with these two colors it's the thing that really popped into my mind as soon as I started to think about what to paint and so I'm really glad that my sister sent that photo to me and that she suggested that I paint that even though I've taken forever and even though this is a quick study but for now hopefully at least it's something and if you're curious about where this is it's a little town that is about half an hour south of the Gold Coast in Australia in northern New South Wales close to Byron Bay which is a place of lots of um, surfers and beaches and beautiful rainforest there really very different from what foreigners might think of for Australia many people think Australia is all just either beaches or deserts but there's a large part on the eastern coast where I come from where there's even and rainforests and mountains and the mountain in the very background Mount Warning was actually sighted by Captain Cook hundreds of years ago when he first came to Australia and it's a really interesting fascinating mountain it's actually the extinct core of an ancient volcano and all the mountains that surround it were the the sides or cal caldera of this shield volcano which was hundreds of kilometers across it must have been a massive massive sight to behold and thankfully it has not been active for millions of years and the um, since the hotspot has moved along the mountains have eroded down some into the ocean some are now covered in lush tropical rainforest or subtropical rainforest i should say and my hometown Moolumba actually sits inside of where the volcano used to be with this beautiful Tweed River that runs through it and lots of green pastures and rolling hills. Obviously a lot of that used to be covered in forest and has been logged over time and become pasture land. My hometown is famous for um, both dairy cow farms and banana plantations and also sugarcane. So quite a big farming town uh, quite a small little country town and yeah I'm really glad that I got a chance to finally paint it and tell you guys a little bit about my hometown of Mwilumba which no one can ever pronounce because it's crazily long and difficult to pronounce but just remember it means the place of many possums or at least that's one possible translation and yeah, I just finished off by putting in some little cows, some little moo cows that were roaming around feeding and grazing on this lush green grass. I hope that you've enjoyed my August art snacks. Don't forget if you haven't subscribed already to click that button down below and to give me a like and a comment and I'll see you guys soon for another art adventure. Remember, create more and consume less. Bye.